Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Jesus reminds us to watch for the signs of his return. Today, we will explore further what we are seeing in our times that line up with what signs he said would indicate the potential of the end and his return. We will also discuss the practical meaning of this as we watch and as a remnant, prepare as he so leads. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, here we are on uh, End Times Friday, Good Times Friday, End Times Friday. Uh, good morning, the very end of April, right? Yeah, end of April. and. Uh, the world is uh, getting crazier and crazier as uh, <laughs> we know the uh, Russian-Ukraine war hasn't quite gone like everybody thought. Uh, oh. It's still going on. Uh, and Russia, the atrocities, the atrocities Ru- Russia, we hear are Russia so seems, sad. Russia seems like they're having trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it looks like, eh, you know, I would, I would call it, um, uh, you know, the issue of typical uh, supply chain problems, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, which they're having you know, worldwide, but they, and this is a little bit indicative of a communist country, is that, remember, it's centrally controlled. Mm-hmm. So the ability- You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point out before you even say anything more on this, we're taping this about three weeks early. And so anything could happen in these three weeks, you know, right. just uh, <laughs> who knows, but go ahead and continue right. to, to share, Easter, but so this, but this is be, important this to recognize. Over, <laughs> all we can do is uh, talk about what we know. And uh, who knows, There's yeah. a, things are changing quickly, yeah, shift, that's, shifting that's, quickly. That's exactly right. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, we are, uh, you know, in this interesting uh, place, you know, that uh, where Russia is, uh, you know, really struggling uh, with execution of the war. But again, communism uh, is top down. So the efficiency at the operating level um, isn't like we're used to because we have management, we have people that join and employed and motivated to, because uh, they earn based upon production and, you know, so it's still, you know, we still would be considered a capitalist country, although it's, <laughs> it's becoming more right. questionable, uh, which actually I'll talk about in a minute. But um, so they're kind of inefficient and they've got, they can't get parts. They're not managing it well, you know, and Ukraine is, you know, same thing. And so it's kind of an interesting thing that they're just battling back and forth. And in a sense, nobody can really implement what's called implement the war get get it to the finish line so they're both struggling hopefully maybe they'll negotiate something maybe by the time this airs they will have negotiated you know uh, a what's called a settlement uh, but um, meanwhile the ripple effects throughout the rest of the world are huge are big yeah uh, including mm-hmm. gas prices for the United States <laughs> right um, and but food scarcity in a lot of countries is is becoming a very real thing it is it, that's right um, Ukraine interesting enough by the way uh, natural resources they mm-hmm. have the top 10 in almost every national resource in the world. Some of them mm. the top two or three. Uh, right. So they're, that's one of the reasons why they want it. I think they're number two in sunflower oil. And yes. that's I, that's rippling out yeah. into everything. Because you'd be surprised how much that goes into as well. That's right. Uh, uh, when I was working for a Fortune 500 company, uh, I did a joint venture with a guy uh, who was out of uh, Vienna, Austria. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it happened to be at the time uh, where, uh, remember Reagan uh, had, uh, you know, basically uh, got Russia to take down the Berlin Wall. Right. And they reunited, unified Germany. So remember Germany was split uh, right. between the, the East and the West uh, and the Berlin was in the middle of it, mm-hmm. including there was a wall in Berlin that literally on right. one side you're communist, the other side you're free. Uh, so, uh, he actually was a German, and he had owned a uh, German factory in East Germany. And w- when the Russians took it over from his family, they took his factory over. Right. Uh, so he lost it. Well, um, after that 
uh, recombination of East and West, uh, mm -hmm. Germany had what's called a reunification uh, agency. Mm -hmm. uh, and their purpose was to re-engage industry in the East side. Uh, right. So they invited everybody, if, you've, if you lost a factory or a, an operation because of the, what the Russians did, why don't you come back, we'll give it to you. Um, back and then you of course you gotta you know make it make it on work. restoration process restoration. but so, yes <laughs> so he he says okay i did it you know and he said so i went <laughs> i said i go back uh and i walk in um and i was a little uh you know a youngster uh at the end of world war ii mm -hmm. um but i was you know go to my factory with my and my dad and all and i walk back in and he says in 40 some years it hadn't changed one iota. They hadn't painted everything. They hadn't repaired anything. The wow. equipment was a mess. Uh, mm -hmm. He said it was completely in a sense. Had it been in use at all? They'd, they'd used it. Okay. But it was just half half baked. Uh, and he said it was. It had to be completely, you know, restored. And we even then I was as I was a believer. I talked to him about entropy. And mm -hmm. everything, everything left alone goes to destruction. He said, "Well, right. he said, I, I can, I can testify to that. Right? Uh, it was, it was, it was a mess." And then he, so he, he said, "Okay, we're gonna, you know, clean it all up." So he, he, um, uh, gets his people together, uh, and says, "Okay, everybody, uh, we're a new, we're the original owner. We're gonna employ everybody. We're gonna pay really good wages." Uh, and we're going to get going on making productive, productive products, and it's, it'll be enjoyable. Right. Do you have any questions? <laughs> so, uh, first question: uh, What do we do when there's no parts and we can't run anything? Hmm. He said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Well, most of the time, we never had enough parts. We basically just came, came, collected our checks, and went home. Is that is that what's going to happen?" Wow. He, he said, uh, <laughs> "We're going to have parts." New management. <laughs> you're going. You're going to work all day long. We're going to have parts. Okay. Next question. What do we do when the uh, food truck comes into the grocery store and brings groceries that day? Because if we don't go and leave work and get in line, we're not going to have food for the week. Because they only come once a week or every every other week. Right. And we don't have anything. Mm. He said, "We're going to take care of that. You're going to have food on the shelves." You can go shop anytime you want. It, everything is going to change uh, from your top-down communist social viewpoint where nothing matters to we're going to have parts. We're going to we're going to reward you. We're going to pay you, and you'll have. We're going to make sure you get stuff to live on. <laughs> so right. uh, it was really interesting, and so we're kind of seeing that play out in the war a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. That. They're not executing, you know, and you would think of Russia with all this power, isn't really executing, implementing its war because it's it's kind of broken down, uh, which is really interesting to see. And, and we'll see what the outcome is that going to be. But we do know, remember, God says in the end, as we're, we've talked about it, you're going to see what? Wars and rumors of wars. Wars and rumors of wars, yeah. And they're going to have impact. And, and I still believe this is the establishment of Gog and Magog, uh, right. And what does that mean and how that's going to go? And, of course, uh, we can see it happen, but we don't know yet the outcome, which right. reminds us, be careful mm -hmm. not to jump too fast or too far with what you think it, it means. That, that, yeah, there's stuff going on, but, you know, be right. careful. Uh, so as we've been observing, you remember that the, the world is, is into chaos and, and headed toward one world government. Uh, and so over the last two weeks, um, and this is one of the things where God alerts us and says, pay attention. Mm -hmm. So uh, from a variety of sources, um, I got uh, little snippets, either an article, a uh, news article, a magazine article uh, on the uh, what's called the World Economic Forum or the WEF. Yep. Uh, and it was like, oh, huh, look at that. Oh. Look at that. And then the leader, which by the way, prior to the last four or five months, 
I knew about the WF, WEF, and I knew it. I knew its goal was to have one world government. I did know that. Right. Yeah, and they make that very plain on their website. Uh, yeah, and that's that's their clear thing. But I didn't know anything, and in my mind, uh, I actually attributed it to a different group of leaders, and then I start seeing, uh, no, it's it's this. There's one guy that's leading it. His name is uh, Klaus uh, uh, Schwab, uh, and he started to become more verbal as he's re- representing, here's what we're going to do, here's what we're going to do, and God said, pay attention to him. Okay, Interesting. so, okay. so um, um, I received it. It's like, huh. Because uh, remember, our question is, what do you want us to know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and how do you want us to understand it? And what do we, what do, we do and say about it? Uh, watch the signs. So he said, well, pay attention to this. So, uh, okay, I do some research. Um, and I start uh, bringing them up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And you can go do this. Klaus Schwab, WEF. And just, I urge everybody, go on YouTube, and you can see many, 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 but just the last three or four, and just listen to what he says. But he's talking, he uses uh, the word, the great reset. Yes. Uh, That's common verbiage. For now them. it's common yeah. verbiage. And that is that um, because of the failure, what he attributes to the failure of the world, mm-hmm. we, the WEF, are going to lead and facilitate a one world government because we've got we've to manage this better and we can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to head toward one world government. Um, we need the population to basically surrender to a new government structure and let us guide you and lead you because you're doing a lot, you by yourself are doing a lousy job. <laughs> uh, and, you know, so there's a lot of promotion of that and it has to do with uh, simple things like um, uh, debt of the governments. Um, uh, and so what they've, what they've done is they've coined a, a new approach of uh, that government debt really is immaterial. It doesn't matter uh, because we can spend endless amount of debt and it doesn't really matter. Uh, so what they're doing, and see, I believe this is purposeful, is they're promoting it that the politicians are accepting. Yeah. Uh, interesting enough, the Republicans in the prior uh, 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 administration, they actually supported that. And interesting right. enough... The Republic, Just continuing the to Repu- raise the, the debt Re- ceiling. The Republicans, and... uh, in their last four years that they, you know, where Trump was in office, uh, uh, and they had control, by the way, of the Senate and the House, uh, or excuse me, the Senate, not the House, they um, uh, raised the debt greater than any other president in the history of the world. Uh, and now it's continuing, by the way, with, with the Biden administration. Right. So they bought into this concept that you don't need to be re- fiscally responsible. Which, by the way, they even talk about it. They say that we know you as a person have to be fiscally responsible, but the governments don't. But as a government, we don't need to. We don't yeah. need to because we, <laughs> we can handle it. We can take an endless amount of debt. Who cares? It's just, it's just there. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, by the way, there's implications to that, which they're now having to somewhat deal with a little bit. Uh, one uh, is inflation. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Uh uh-oh, we thought we could control this. And it didn't matter the debt, because the debt, remember, is spending that uh, is, and by the way, taking, interesting enough, taking people out of the workforce and paying things for them, which then promotes uh, raising prices because we're now raising the labor rates and the material rates of everything around, interesting enough around the world because it's been going on worldwide. Right. Well, now we've got inflation that we are getting hit in our pocketbooks with. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're, they're trying to triangulate that. I believe it's purposeful. And they say it doesn't matter. I think they know it does matter. But that's, that's right. the new uh, approach. But it does move their agenda forward. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yesterday, uh, and again, I'm paying attention to the WEF, Klaus Schraub, uh, uh, one of his lieutenants... Uh, speaks publicly and they record it uh, and says we are close to a digital one world currency 
Uh, and we are moving in that direction and we're getting the pieces together. Was he speaking with the WEF? Was he speaking, there is like a cryptocurrency sim, um, conference going on. Was he speaking I at think, that? I think he was at the cryptocurrency conference okay. uh, as yeah. a representative of WEF. Of WEF, uh, okay. Because he's, he's one of the head uh, guys right. there with Klaus. Uh, but he made a statement. We are working on developing, getting close to moving mm -hmm. the world to a digital one world currency. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? At the beginning of the tribulation, that is so. Right. Well, huh. Uh, Pay attention. <laughs> uh, it's wow. Um, now, again, we can't yet say exactly when, but as opposed to, let's say, even five years ago, we would say, well, how how does one world right. currency happen? Now we can see where and how it could. Now we can see the movement of it and even mm -hmm. the statement of it. And see, I believe... Remember that the world population willingly embraces it, uh, which I believe there'll be a, there'll be a cause of a crisis, and they'll have the well, solution. And, but I think yeah. they're speaking it to to get people, you know, reinforced. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, by the way, we're going to have great food shortages this summer. Yeah, I was going to say even watching. So you know, I was reading an article about the protest in Peru right now over the inflation rate and the lack of food. Yes, and and I think we're going to see this more and more and more. You know, they're already saying because of lack of fertilizer and lack of different natural resources, you know, that there will be a significant food shortage this summer. Right. And as that happens, then that really does ripple out to this greater sense of what are we going to do you know, and, and a lack of control. And so then somebody swooping in with a solution looks much more attractive when you're seeing many people like, you know, it's not just in theory, now you're seeing all kinds of people really um, not having life, you know, things that they simply need for day-to-day -day living, right. not, you know, not a lack of luxuries, but a lack of sustenance. That's right. Um, and the, uh, and so what I see it, what I've seen happen is that they're like the great reset uh, the one world currency, the digital currency. Um, I think there's a conditioning. I think COVID was, uh, became a conditioning situation where okay. they kind of went past the, the, the uh, actual occurrence of uh, the disease and the impact of the disease. Because actually, in a sense, the result of that was really no different than what we had. Remember the swine flu, SARS, H1N1, those were coronaviruses, and they let it kind of play out. And yeah, there right. was people that got sick and contagious, but the end result of of COVID, what we call COVID-19, plus whatever next one is, wasn't any different than that. But they played their hand further to keep control of, and literally the one, the one, the gov, the world came under the surrender of one world government in a sense. Right. Uh, well, that was conditioning. That's conditioning people to these things. And hey, you got to have a vaccine to do this. And you know that's all been uh, released a little bit now. By the way, uh, by the time this airs, supposedly, and uh, around the world, they're going to they're going to take away the requirement of mask on airplanes. Uh, oh, when is that due to expire? Eight, the, uh, well, it's supposed to be the 18th. This is this will be air after that, but uh, yeah. Oh, I hope we'll, it does. We'll, we'll be, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll say, uh, look how prophetic we are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we said that was going to end. People said, hey, it happened. You know, and, yeah, that's kind of clever. Uh, so uh, that's going to happen. But um, I think the speaking of the digital currency, one world currency, mm -hmm. the great reset, I think we'll see more and more and more and more speaking it, developing it, processing it. Um, today, you know, would even the average person per se around the world say, yeah, I really want one world government? Eh, not really. Um, there's a, there's called globalist. Right. That, yeah, I think maybe that would be I think be a level of desperation is yeah. going to have to be reached first. Well, yeah, and plus the, uh, the young kids, and, and when I say young, I'm saying under, you know, 30, they're already in their mindset, and this is done through studies, uh, they're already saying, I think globalism is better than what we have. Uh, and we don't really need capitalism like we have, but we need something different. And yeah, we need government to fund things and uh, have uh, their cities, by the way, that and are wipe doing, out our student debt, uh, universal <laughs> incomes. There's a, there's, <laughs> and this is like, 
this, and this makes sense to you kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a city in California that is uh, guaranteeing, <laughs> this, is, this is beyond uh, unbelief, uh, guaranteeing a monthly income for if, if you're uh, transgender or, uh, or gay or you call yourself something other than a normal male and female. Then, then we're going to pay your. Then income. you get a guaranteed. Then income. you get a guaranteed income. If you're normal, wow. what we would call, call believers. We would call normal. You don't qualify. <laughs> so it's, it's 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 crazy. Uh, wow. It's unbelievable. I mean, you can t- say you talk about chaos and you talk about mm-hmm. lawlessness and you talk about sensibility. It doesn't make sense. So it's mm. quite funny. But so what I see is that there's a movement of conditioning, and then. Uh, I believe in order for it to be effective, there'll have to be a economic collapse, food shortages, rioting, can't work, can't pay bills, a struggle. And then now they've been telling you we could do this. And then they come along and offer it and do it. And everybody it, says, oh, you know what? Absolutely. Just do it. Fix my it. Mo- yeah. My motivation has just changed mm-hmm. with, well, I didn't think it was such a good idea per se, but that's when everything was going mm-hmm. fine. When things aren't right. going fine, people change their minds pretty quick, by the way. Right, uh, right. So, you know, that's just interesting stuff. And I'll, I'll, I'll report more because I'm going to uh, do more research. And uh, But God said, pay attention. This is real stuff. It really is happening. Uh, uh, I said, uh, could you tell me when it's going <laughs> to He says, no, <laughs> no, I'm not telling you that. Uh, don't ask me that. Uh, uh, it may be sooner than than people think, uh, but um, my timeline is always different. So, mm-hmm. but just observe it, and now you can see something. Where even three a few years ago, how does one world currency work? Well, now there's actually a group working on doing it, and everybody's saying, "I think that's a good idea." So it's gonna. It, and by the way, that's oh. what happens. So that's mm-hmm. what's cool. So as we uh, continue with our study here. Uh, we are uh, looking at uh, the uh, churches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so if you would uh, go to Revelation chapter 2, uh, we're in the mm-hmm. church, uh, uh, which is called the corrupt church. Uh, so go verse chapter 2, 18 through uh, 29. All right. And do you pronounce that Thyatira? Thyatira. Uh-huh. Thyatira, okay. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira, these things says the son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you, I say, and to the rest of Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, and they shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my father. And I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Yeah. So what does uh, Christ say about this church? Wow. There's some some serious stuff going on here. Um, but the whole Jezebel thing here, I think, is interesting. Yeah. And um, what they have allowed in and, and, and how she has permeated it, it sounds yeah. like. Okay. So um, uh, he says that, you know, your prior works, you know, were, were ones of expressing love, service, faith, patience. Um, you know, um, yes, uh, I'm supporting that. Um, he says, but you've allowed Jezebel, 
uh, into your church. Okay, now um, let's go back because he uses Jezebel. He talks about sexual immorality and idols, but he's talking much broader than that. So, um, you know, who was Jezebel engaged with in the Old Testament? Oh, you have to remind me. Yes. Um, And uh, she was married to Ahab. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not right. Captain Ahab, but King Ahab. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and uh, so he had the great example, member of the firewood, and and uh, you know we're going to see who God really is, right? And you you do right. your mom, well, I'm going to do God, and um, and they try to. Uh, uh, it's a great story, by the way, and it's really this is where <laughs> personally. Um, I, I kind of experienced personally God in this way. If you go back and read that story, it's, it's like hilarious. It's, it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. It's funny. It's extremely funny because they, you know, pile up the wood. Uh, okay. You know, and, and uh, Elijah's, you know, he's sitting there and saying, you know, um, uh, well, uh, go ahead. Let's have Baal. All on your God. Let's right. Your God. <laughs> you know, go ahead and do it. You know, and nothing's happened. Mm-hmm. He said, <laughs> and he says it not quite in this nice of words even. Mm-hmm. Is your God out going to the bathroom? <laughs> is, is he? Did he forget about you and he's out busy because right. he's got to go to the bathroom? And he, he does it a little bit more graphically than that. Um, he's a little sassy in this moment, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, what's the matter? You know, uh, uh, is he too busy? Uh, you know, and it goes, it's really hilarious, mm-hmm. you know, and. Um, and I, I personally, my relationship with God kind of includes a little bit of a uh, funny, like, you know, like I read that article about the transgender, and he says, he says, hey, Rich, um, uh, what do you think about that idiotic thing, you know, and um, uh, how crazy is this, you know, and uh, and so there's a, there's a funny, but it's a funny story, uh, so nothing happens. So Elijah says, okay, uh, tell you what, uh, not only is it going to be done so that you never doubt a thing, go pour a ton of water on the wood. Mm. Um, and so you can't say somehow I started it. Right. Just douse it. Wants it to be clear that God is God, right? And then, okay, Father, you said, now, by the way, this mm-hmm. is interesting. Think about this. On what basis? Did God say he could do it? He spoke it. on who he is. He spoke, he spoke it. spoke it yeah. to Elijah. See, Elijah didn't say, I hope you do this. Right. Uh, I would like you to do this. I'm, I'm going to demonstrate glory to you. So I'm going to do this. Op- I hope you show up. Right. He didn't say that. Father, what do you got to say about it? I'm going to do this. You do this. You challenge him to this. And you see that they do nothing. And watch, watch me do my do. thing. Yeah, go ahead yeah. and pour water in it. So it, it completely burns up from the top, you know, and everybody, mm-hmm. by the way, not only does it uh, get the wood, it kills all the prophets of Baal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and God says, I'm taking care of them too. Uh, so that kind of, you know, got it. Well, guess what? Who got mad? Jezebel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jezebel uh, has power. She's got ability. And uh, so she chases uh, after uh, Elijah to kill him mm-hmm. and say, we got to eliminate. And so that's what that's what he's saying here is you've, You've allowed people to enter into the church that, interesting enough, want to control and 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 basically end my work here in this church. Uh, and you've let it in, uh, and you're completely corrupt. Uh, and think about that. He says you have done things kind of well in the past, but now you're being led by Jezebel, who's trying to to you know, and sexual immorality and idolatry is is completely profane everything that I am right. uh, and you are joining it you're committing adultery with that by you participating in this new er- ele- element of control and running things that is opposite of me uh, and it's not even kind so of what would that look like in modern day in modern day it would look like um, uh, I have a set of rules mm-hmm. that you have to perform to and if you do, you can stay. If you don't, we're going to kick you out. And they stop, for example, studying the Word of God. Um, and 
there was a uh, there was a, a big revival a few years ago called the Lakewood Revival, uh, and the leader of it uh, was being anointed by the uh, the spirit spirit led people as the next uh, great revivalist. Uh, and I got phone calls. What about this? Because this seems because it, it even got it even made it in God TV, uh, and it was it was broadcast worldwide. And everybody was saying, look, it's starting there in Lakewood, Florida, and it's going to go around the world and all that. And people said, and called me and said, what do you think about this? Is, is this of God or not? I said, well, let me go. I'll go find out. Uh, so um, I just go to the guy's website. Um, and this is the example of Jezebel. So I go to the guy's website, and I'm just reading. And he's got a school of prophecy. Mm-hmm. Spirit-led, prophetic stuff, you know, which is good. It's good stuff. Mm-hmm. I read, 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 it says this. And I purposely, and this is exactly what it says. I purposely do not allow any of my students to read, abide in, stay in the Bible because I want it to be completely free of any constraint. Oh, wow. And I said, oh, no. Wow. There you go. There's Jezebel right there. Hmm. Uh, It's gotten in and it looks like something, but it's completely opposite trying to kill the work mm-hmm. of God. Okay, so I said to people, hmm. no, this isn't of God, and you'll see it not be of God. Okay, so <laughs> all these big shots uh, go there because it's getting bigger and bigger, and they actually gather together, and they have a, a service that's on television, and they mm-hmm. anoint him as the next revivalist, worldwide revivalist, and revivals going around the world, starting with Lakewood in the sky. Um, well, guess what? <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Two weeks later, the guy divorces his wife and ends his ministry completely. Mm. Well, you don't divorce your wife in two weeks. Right. It's been going on and on and on because why? He stopped abiding and he right. purposely said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to control things without God, basically. Mm. That's what Jezebel And that's about. that Jezebel is all about control and manipulation. Control and manipulation. And yeah. you do it my way and I'm going to run the church my way and and you follow me, and you do only what I say. And uh, mm-hmm. he said, you, you've allowed it in, and there is not even a thought of seeking God's will, my will, at all. You have decided your own will, and you're controlling it, and you're manipulating wow. it, and everybody's buying it. And he says, if you don't repent, I'm basically going to just take take it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, your only remedy is you're going to have to repent, and you got to get rid of what? Jezebel. Right. Uh, and decide to do it over. So, you know, churches mm-hmm. have elements of Jezebel. And usually mm-hmm. it's in the form of controlling people who are in leadership, uh, committees, variety of things. But uh, this is one of the churches that he calls corrupt because mm-hmm. he said, you're, you're profaning me and you're committing adultery with that uh, profaning me. So we'll pick it up. We'll come back a little bit more to Thyatira next time. And then we'll pick up uh, the next year's Sardis when we go into uh, more of it. But... Uh, remember, he's talking to the church, right? So it's not a, a business organization; it's it's the body of Christ. So right, uh, it's important to pay attention yeah. to. So yeah. we'll we'll continue it. And again, if you're caught up or your church is involved with things that you think eh, I'm not sure about this, seems like it's heavy control, and c- mm-hmm. control is the opposite of just freedom and joy and, and peace, uh, mm-hmm. and walking with God with confirmation that the Spirit is guiding and leading. And there's there's just control by in the part of a person, persons, leader group. Uh, if that's happening, I would pray about that and consider: Am I even supposed to be part of this, or should I go somewhere different? Uh, because uh, I'm I'm actually attaching myself. That's why I said you're committing adultery by right. just being there uh, and participating wow. in it. So pretty significant stuff. So hmm. we'll we'll pick it up. Fascinating. Uh, we'll okay. Pick it up next time and. Uh, uh, encourage you to, to keep looking at signs. I'll keep bringing up the date, and uh, we'll keep going through these churches, and and we'll try to we'll try to bring it back down to what does all this mean. But we're trying to set the stage with it. So uh, we hope great. hope you do well, and have a great weekend. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Yeah. Take care. See you later. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions 
about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.